Over the course of 2023, I came to the realization that I was playing MMOs less and less. Not because the MMOs currently available were bad by any means, but because I'd conquered everything there was to conquer. Nothing felt fresh anymore, and I found no motivation to log into and play the MMOs that I'd love so much. There was nothing new to accommodate that feeling of emptiness I had whenever I'd open the launcher for WoW, Final Fantasy XIV, BDO. This led me to seek other games in other genres to attempt to satiate that thirst that I had for difficult multiplayer content with large open worlds to explore hidden wonders around every corner. The last few months have arguably been the most fun for me in over a year due to the number of fun genre-defining game releases that took the gaming sphere by storm. Pal World, Enshrouded, Helldivers 2, all monolithic hits that absolutely nobody saw achieving the overwhelming success that they had, and while I have played all of them, especially Pal World, probably more than I should have, there's one game that has given me exactly what I wanted out of an MMO, and the worst part is, it's not even an MMO. Yeah, you heard that correctly. The best MMO that I have played in years happens to not even be an MMO but it has all of the MMO tropes and features that make MMOs so enjoyable to me. Before I delve into what game this is, and why I feel it's as good as it is, let me take a moment to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon who allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single week. You guys are phenomenal and I cannot thank you all enough for the support. Wuthering Waves is a large-scale open-world anime RPG. For those of you that have been with me for a while, you know that some of my favorite MMOs are anime MMOs. Soul Worker, PSO2, Closers, Critica, Flife. My most anticipated MMOs of the last decade were Puria Chronicles, Blue Protocol, and Tower of Fantasy. I played the first closed beta for Wuthering Waves, and while I thought that it definitely looked good and played even better, I felt as though it was severely lacking as a game. Inferior multiplayer, absence of world content. I almost feared that we'd get another Tower of Fantasy, all looks, no substance. However, over the course of the last week, I've been glued to the game, playing it for several hours at a time. There was something unusual about it that just captivated me. I know the immediate sentiment is going to be, but isn't this just Genshin? And I would totally understand you thinking that way, I truly would. But this game is so much more than just Genshin. Beginning the game, you don't get to create your character, which is a staple of the MMO genre. That's a little bit disappointing is being able to customize the appearance of the avatar that you'll be inhabiting for the foreseeable future adds depth and layers that help you grow attached to the world and its story. But you'll quickly forget all about that when you see the extensive selection of husbandos and waifus that you can recruit. Now this is a gacha game and I don't typically cover gacha games on this channel, I do have a separate channel for that. Being a gacha means that you obtain the vast majority of your characters through either real money purchases or earning currency in game. Character models look better than any other anime MMO, past or present. The sheer detail that has gone into crafting absolute perfection is unparalleled and I don't foresee MMOs having remotely comparable character models for a long time to come. The fluidity of their movements, the smoothness of their actions, especially in combat, the interactions that you have with the world while running to get the higher ground, gliding to cover long distances, parkour that allows you to run up, grapple, and nimbly navigate around or over obstacles like rooftops, ledges, cliffs. All of these features are missing from modern MMOs. When playing Final Fantasy XIV or WoW, the world exists as a means to get from one area to the next to provide you some pretty locations while navigating to the next point in the story. There's very little to see or do. In Wuthering Waves, there are secrets around every corner, farmable materials that you can use to upgrade your characters, treasure chests providing you money, gear, items. There are trails to follow that lead you to rewards, dungeons to clear, bosses to kill, side quests to ignore, I mean do. The world feels like it's alive and filled with purpose and meaning. That doesn't mean that there aren't hubs and that the world doesn't propel you from point A to point B for quests. That is very much the case. Some quests, especially side quests, are very reminiscent of what you'd find in an MMO. Kill X monster, loot X item, farm X flower. The story, which is an issue that both Mrs. Dix and I had in the original beta, has been completely overhauled. It's faster, it's less cluttered, less convoluted, more concise, it's dark, a little messed up, and most importantly, a strong contrast to what we're so often presented with in MMOs. If I asked you to name five MMOs with a really good, very compelling story, I bet you'd give me maybe three. 
Final Fantasy XIV, sure. Guild Wars 2, yeah, okay. Maybe Star Wars The Old Republic, maybe The Secret World. Part of what makes an MMO so captivating to me that allows for me to truly become enthralled in its world is its narrative. And Wuthering Waves is very much a narrative-driven game. Now, I haven't progressed nearly enough through it to really give a thorough analysis of the story, neither has my wife Mrs. Styx, but we're enjoying what we're watching, especially the character stories. Much like an MMO, Wuthering Waves features characters that function more or less like classes. Fist fighters, gun fighters, sword fighters. Numerous characters utilize the same weapon type but have unique abilities that allow for them to feel different, making it seem like there are already a multitude of builds tied to the visual appearance of your character. Every character has their own personality. Some have really large personalities. Some have personalities that even go as far as explaining to us how gravity works. See, and people said playing video games can't be beneficial to your... The, with extra, the uh, characters have their own backstories, their own unique chapters to play through, providing you a lot of insight into them. Once more, allowing you to grow attached to your comrades and adding additional depth to an already fairly deep game. I thoroughly enjoy how gearing works in this game. In traditional MMOs, you spend hours, days, weeks, months grinding the best in slot gear only to replace them during the next patch, which keeps you in this repetitious cycle that just never ends. Because when you finally achieve that moment where you reach the maximum item level, it's immediately lost with new gear to obtain. I've kind of grown to dislike gear treadmills. Thankfully, in Wuthering Waves, there are two ways of gearing. On the one hand, you have a weapon. The weapon you can farm, then once obtained with the correct stats and substats, you'll never need to replace. Then there are Echoes, which are special versions of the monsters that you fight out in the world. These include base monsters or rare bosses. You defeat them, you throw a pal ball at them, and then attach them to a character as an extension that enhances them. They provide beneficial stat boosts, max attack, HP, crit chance. They have bonuses for equipping them, and some of them even function as an ability. That can heal you mid-battle, that can AoE down dozens of enemies. There is so much purpose to a significant portion of what you can do in Wuthering Waves, from the random flower you can find out in the world that you might need for a quest or to upgrade a character at a later date, to the chest that might give you that last bit of XP you need to level up. All of this without even discussing combat, which is arguably the best combat in any gacha game with the single exception of Punishing Grey Raven, and better than any current anime MMO. Better than Soul Worker, better than Closers, better than PSO2, better than Blue Protocol. The dodging, the parrying, the fluidity of the movements and abilities, everything feels so absolutely flawless. I've never experienced combat like this in an MMO ever, which is probably more sad than it is exciting. Because even in terms of MMOs yet to release, there just isn't a single game coming that has combat this fun or functional. We could hardly compare this to an MMO if it were a single player RPG though, right? Wuthering Waves is multiplayer compatible, allowing several players to all group together and pursue a common goal. I played the original beta test cooperatively, quite a bit of it. Some of the bosses were just too overwhelming and difficult to tackle it alone, and I've been told the bosses in this test phase are equally as competitive. Mrs. Sticks and I are close to unlocking co-op, and I'm hoping to this weekend, but being able to do all of the above with another person, with several other people, with a world filled with content to consume that rewards grouping up and tackling content cooperatively, that is what an MMO is, and that is what Wuthering Waves does. Wuthering Waves, even Pow World, Enshrouded, Helldivers, they're all games that would do so incredibly as MMO, well, with the exception of Helldivers. They, they feel like an MMO and promote the same sense of wonder and cooperative necessity and reward as an MMO. And while I'm incredibly excited to continue my journey in all of these games, I'm currently obsessed with Wuthering Waves since it is finite and there is an end to this beta test in sight. So I need to enjoy it while I can because it won't be releasing until later this year, in theory. Now, don't get me wrong, 99% of gacha games are not like this. It's a safe bet to claim that 99.9% .9 of gacha games aren't like this, which makes Wuthering Waves all the more special, and me all the more excited to play it when it launches. I truly hope MMOs can learn from what Wuthering Waves and all of these multiplayer games are achieving, because if they don't, and we continue to get the same boring, repetitious, 
non-innovative games we've been getting for years, I wouldn't expect there to be much of a genre left. Now, if Wuthering Waves is not a game you're at all interested in, though, absolutely no problem. I got you covered with two different videos on screen right now.